Greetings, everyone. Praying you're having a breathful day. I've just been in the lab, in my own bubble today. Greetings, greetings, greetings. I just want to thank everyone for the the feedback, especially in Breath Family. And I'm surprised the first the first wave of feedback I got for. Uh, the Popcon and Drake remix that I did with Breath Kian Dunn. That's technically the first reggae subliminal. But now we took it up another notch. Shout out to Masego and our conversation. This is the year of unapologetic expression. For real. You know, honoring our roots and having fun. Who cares about the judgment? I saw what you just posted on your uh, performance there. Masego, if you're watching. Like I said, on a, this is a year of just being unapologetic. Being you as much as possible. Without saying sorry. Without caring. For real. We need more of that. More than ever. The age of fake and you know the less human expression let's get rid of that let's be more human and honoring the time we have together for real so if you're new to my page and this will be the video I'll be adding to that subliminal especially for you know, people in the reggae world that's not privy to breath, you know, that was the intention. For the subliminal breathwork music, especially the, the buju, let me turn this down. Uh, for the buju subliminal, you don't have to match the breathing. The main point is to allow your mirror neurons and only breathe with your nose and just listen to the track, okay? When it comes to any subliminal alchemy breathwork music, you don't have to match the breathing whatsoever. And let the, I'm sure some of you experience it. If you wanna share or even hop on, you're more than welcome to. Uh, what inspired me of making subliminal breathwork music in the first place was a friend's uncle was on the respirator and I had my first ever track just sitting there for a very long time and uh, I was, yeah, I'll be honest, I was scared of how people were gonna judge me. Oh, you're making breathing noises on music, etc. But in the back of my mind, you know, 80%, 80 to 90% of communication is nonverbal when it comes to human communication and even empathy. It's more than words, it's bodily chemicals that you can smell, that you can feel in terms of someone's heart, uh, the heart rate val variability coming from that person and your body is picking up on it uh, because we're also receivers as well. We're not just projectors. Right? We're also receiving information visually, audially, and also what we feel in the environment. That also includes the air in terms of how the air interacts with your body, right? As they say in the, in the reggae world, the natural mystic, as Bob would say, right? What do you think it's talking about? Spirit, or the spirit in the environment music, uh, in the environment. Ooh, I like that. Tele-empathy, <laughs> empathy. I, I love that, I love that. That's what it is. Yeah, because even in the aspect of telekinesis, even though you're not using verbs to communicate, even if your mouth is closed, you're still what? You're still breathing, right? So your breath pattern definitely has something to reciprocate and also receive, project with the frequency that is being communicated. Just like if you're a couple for a very long time, you know you know what that couple's about to say even before they said it because subconsciously your body also picked up on their breathing patterns as well. 
and there are certain emotional states, it all comes into one. There's nothing uh, separate whatsoever. Everything has a ripple in itself. So again, if you're new to the breath space, it's an honor, welcome. And I hope you have fun with the breath and uh, give other characteristics of breath a chance. And I know, um, it, you know, as what the mainstream puts out in terms of quote unquote breath work, I hope this shares another diff a different side and another play when it comes to the breath, right? I just posted the other day about certain styles of breath work that people are also dying or having seizures with, right? And no one really ever talks about those. Even the people who promotes those styles of breathing, they barely even talk about or even, you know, if God forbid someone, um, something happens with alchemy breath work and they were doing a particular exercise, of course I would talk about it, but not once ever. Um, those mainstream, I'm not gonna put any names up, but those mainstream people who promotes that and then all over the world, the news are, even more news are uh, reporting it more and more of doing those type of quote unquote methods, if you will, someone have died and they barely even talk about it, right? So it just goes to show you where people's heart is in that sense. And I met people personally that have been with the founders of those methods in person and certain things come out. So it's just funny how certain things reveal themselves and in the path that I'm going. Again, I'm just pushing out different styles of having play with the breath and it doesn't have to be rigid. It can be fun as well. And here's the number one thing you should consider. If you can't do it all day, is it really considered sustainable? Really think about that. I don't care what method it is. Really consider that. If you can't do that particular method all day, is it really considered sustainable to a certain degree, to a certain point? Don't you think your body will, <laughs> your, your body's gonna give at a certain point. So I think that's super important to acknowledge and, and disregard the spiritual bypassing that clearly is obviously happening, especially the fact that those particular people who start those methods don't even acknowledge the people who have passed doing those methods, right? Or even having seizures or stuff like that. It's really sad. Uh, there's even more YouTube channels finally going over like, hey, we should, we should really consider these styles of breathing. We need to double check. And I think they need further research because there's some propaganda actually going on behind the scenes that you're not seeing the full sp spectrum with, right? And for me, uh, it was crossing the line to the fact that those people didn't acknowledge the people who have passed or unfortunately, even, like it doesn't hurt to even say maybe they did the method wrong or something like that, you know, at least come out and at least say your condolences or I don't know. I personally, you know, this is one of the reasons why I focus more on parasympathetic style of breathing where you can do it over and over. Even in the 528 video that I put out, I'm telling everyone, the slower the better, all right? Even though you heard me going deeper and deeper in that way, for you just starting off that way, like I said, it's good to go at your own pace, all right? And that's why I love honoring people's and meet, meet people where they're at versus follow me, go at my pace, right? Because when you're in person, when, you're actually, when you actually come to an Alchemy Breathwork event and everyone's breathing at their own pace, you can feel a different style of resonance, a different, I don't know, I don't even know how to describe it. And there's some times where everyone's breathing at their own pace and then everyone will just harmonize just by themselves, and it's a miraculous, beautiful symphony, a breath symphony, if you will, that, that tends to happen. And I never take those in-person events ever for granted, which, um, you know, after Europe, after I touch Europe in April, when I come back and summer is about to hit, 
you know, all, all the subliminal reggae music that I'm putting it out is to, you know, get the ball rolling and to give you a heads up of what's to come in these in-person events that I have yet to see, ever experienced or ever done, especially in the reggae space. And hopefully we can also take the experience that I have brewing, if you will, uh, on the reggae cruise that happens once a year. Shout out the Marlies and Rohan if you're watching this. So, you know, that's where my mind is. That's where my mind wants to go. And really, again, have fun with the breath. It doesn't have to be rigid. It doesn't have to be, you know? I think when it comes to practices, keyword practices, you know, the more fun a practice is, the more it, it is sustainable, the more the journey and the path. And even though you do have your ups and downs, of course, certain trauma might come up in terms of memory when you're going through different breathing practices will come up, etc. But at least you're having fun with it and you're not, you don't, you don't get swallowed. You don't get swallowed up by those experience, even though they may come up during a quote unquote fun exercise, right? You, you tend to realize like, oh my God, I'm still laughing, but at the same time, this traumatic experience is coming up. But at the same time, even without me telling you, and I've seen this with people that I work one-on-one -on -one with, that in their own way, without me even saying anything, they're learning how to transmute a traumatic experience with uh, deep connection with their own inner soul. You know, I, I, I connect it with, you know, how Jesus br uh, breathed out the Holy Spirit into his disciples out of the own spirit. He didn't allow an entity to control him or whatever. He went into the source itself and then used that as a buffer instead, instead of a, a medium, so to speak, right? And that's what people are also doing when they go to go, go at their own pace and tapping into the mirror neurons aspect when you have multiple energies and people around you focusing on that same directional energy it's not that you're harmonizing with their energies you're harmonizing with the core foundation of their physiology just focusing on the breath right that's why I allow people to, if they have some type of religious belief or whatever their beliefs are, I say, hey, what are you breathing life into, right? I don't force them to think, uh, to breathe life in or inhale um, a deity or whatever the case may be. Allow everyone to, again, it's all about meeting people where they're at, right? And I find that very powerful in everyone's journey it's also respecting people's journey as well when you're working with them one-on-one -on -one or just in groups and it gives everyone a deeper experience it doesn't feel like you're forcing it too much you know what i mean so i feel like that is such a key component to any journey you're on not just the breath journey but any journey you're on i think it's really important to to honor that, yeah, don't drown. Yeah, um, if anyone wants to share their subliminal breathwork experience, you're more than welcome to hop on live. And I just wanted to give a thank you for everyone out there that's also been sharing the scalar posts that's happening in California. If you don't know what's happening in California, uh, let me show you what's happening in California. I gotta go down. Um, but if you're in California and you know what I've been up to with Scalar already, I want you to take a picture of the sky, particularly the skyline of your town. Let me pause this real quick. California will be wetter than 99.9% .9 of Earth over the next 10 days with over 20 trillion gallons of water expected to fall across the state over the next two weeks. That's enough water to cover a flat surface the size of California and over a half a foot of water. Okay, so 
that that is happening, but at the same time, we're not going to, again, drown into it, right? And people have been sending in uh, pictures of the skyline of their their hometown. And what I do is take those pictures and I place it on the on the scaler here, but not just here. I actually sent out a, an, e an email blast to thousands of people that may have scalar, even scalar stickers. I tell people, even if you have scalar stickers, print out these pictures of the skylines or the map of uh, the the hurricane or the whatever you want to call it. The I call it the heart piss because it's one of the biggest storms <laughs> that everyone's just it's just going over people's head, especially in the quote unquote spiritual community over in California. Well, you know, as we saw during COVID, you know, out of all the places you would think California would be the safe haven, right? During the whole pandemic. But you clearly saw what happened in California. And there's so many reasons to why uh, that is. And I tell, I tell the Miami community all the time because the Miami community literally has, you know how some people say that the way California is commercialized, they say that yoga started in California, right? And that's where Miami is slowly picking up pace. So Miami has the car and we have the key in the ignition. All we have to do is quote unquote start it because that's what's happening. So I tell people all the time, remember, and you know the stereotype, especially people who have been over there themselves, you know, the plastic, if you know what I mean, uh, learn from California's mistakes. <laughs> you know, straightforward, no BS, like seriously, learn from California's mistakes, especially when it comes to uh, spiritual bypassing and stuff of that nature. Get out of the too much of the commercializing and don't fall too much in that trap and stay within the humanity core principles, you know, because here in Miami, you can have really deep conversations. People look you in the eye. You know, it's such a different feel here from even my experiences living in California. And I went from north all the way to L.A., all right, all the way to the point where, you know, my business partner screwed me over, was homeless, you know, had that experience. Uh, some of you already know. Uh, oh, you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean. So again, uh, before we hop off this, I see Raw, Raw Fit Beauty. I'm going to have her hop in. Hey, sister. So again, if you live in California, take a picture of the skyline of your town or city and send it to Devon at alchemybreath.work with the subject, California, uh, Skyline, whatever it is. And I'm gonna send out an email blast to everyone in my email list that has a scaler. And, and uh, they're gonna place those pictures on the scaler as well. So what's happening is we're, we're pushing out harmonious frequencies into those areas. But something to note, why the picture of the sky? Because the sky has, it's, it's a ley line. It's a ley line of energy. No, Devon at alchemybreath.work, not .com, .work, all right? Yeah, so keep on sending them because we're not done yet. You know, it's still, you know, there's still things brewing over there, but from what many people are emailing me and sending me and what I'm seeing with my own two eyes, we're doing something. Right, and there's not enough scalers physically over there, so hey, we're doing it remotely, which is which is beautiful. And uh, again, I thank everyone. Yeah, thank you, Isaac. I thank everyone out there who actually has shared any of my stuff. You know, pushing it out there. Yeah, I I, I pinned it. It's right there. All right, let's have. Hello, sister. <laughs> What's popping? Nothing here. <laughs> I'm doing my life. <laughs> oh, you left your hat yesterday, by the way. <laughs> oh. 
Darn it. Uh, car huh? in the place. Yeah, you left oh, it so in, you're the in the car. I left it in the car, right? <laughs> Oh, hey, hey, hey we might do uh, we'll Inception night. I, I haven't watched the movie in a very long time, so we might do Inception. Oh. Why not? Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. Maybe so what Friday. brings you on, sister? Nothing. Just watching you, listening to you. I'm about to get on the call with a client. I was just ch tuning into you and your... All your, yeah, all your well, <laughs> Nicole here. Every time Nicole's with me, I'm always blasting reggae, and she always has the Shazam out. <laughs> right there's so many yeah so i just released my second uh subliminal breathwork track featuring buju which is just about to pop on for some reason this particular track is not on instagram's um uh, music notification i'm trying to figure out why but this specific track out of all his music Sometimes some songs are on, yeah, on Instagram's yeah. selection, unfortunately. You got to, like, put it in your background. Well, <laughs> you it's wanna, plain. Like, and this, this particular track is part of the, the Buju Banton uh, subliminal as well. And I was introducing maybe people that I'm maybe attracting finally from the Jamaican world that may not have any clue about breath, right? to just, you know, how powerful our mirror neurons are, just listening to subliminal breathing or hearing harmonious breathing practices that our subconscious might pick up on healthy breathing practices and might make us feel more relaxed, more ease. And you've been in the sauna a bunch of times with me, you know, as I go in it, how do you feel when you listen to, to it? And you may not even be doing the same breathing, but just listening to it. Yeah, you know what it is? I, I don't think we realize how addicted to being in a state of survival um, we really are. And so we like kind of get unconsciously, subconsciously attracted to music that like triggers our, like our fight or flight, which continues to hinder our breath from being like, you know, that full expansion of, you know, that fascia layer gets really tense and that fight or flight, you know, we just can't breathe properly. And so it is. Yeah, I, I've been really tuned in. I mean, it's been a while, but really tuned into the words and songs. And I'm like, I'll it instantly turn something. If it doesn't align, I'm like, oh, no, those are not a word yeah, that I want to like, call into even, my life. Even some, um, just some words are even trigger points. Like you, especially when you're coming out of a state of, you know, just mellowed out bliss. And then you hear that one word, you're like, whoa. You, like, you can really, if you pay attention, you can really feel whether well, certain words and the vibration, how it affects your overall well-being. And when I took a Sorry. fast from Sorry. lyrics, um. yeah. Yeah, no, words, yeah. Like yesterday we were talking about, oh, we have to work today or whatever. I was like, no, I'm canceling the word work and I'm, <laughs> I'm using magic from now on. I'm magic, I'm a magician. I'm creating magic all the time. Like I'm officially that today. I anchored in magic for replacing work. So whoever wants to join in on that one. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's what it is. Yeah. It's a symphony of when it comes to quote unquote work, you're right. It's a symphony of um, bodily communications, whether it be in the, in the space of interacting or playing with other fellow members, creating, you know, stuff, etc. Right. So, I didn't, you know, when yeah. I came with, up with the word alchemy breathwork, I didn't, I understood the aspect of work in the breathwork, because it is technically work, but at the same time, the word alchemy helps harmonize the work aspect, right? That's why, you know, we're playing with subliminal breathwork music, where it's not just physically breathing, but just also listening and programming right. your breath patterns in a subconscious way, right? So playing with different elements of what the breath can bring yeah well your 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 like business name whatever it's more like the work is more like i feel like I think of it as exercise which is you know you have to put in the effort to getting like the results where when we like work at a computer like it just seems like daunting. like i don't know like it's a different i think like a different energy to it but yeah with yours is i view it as more right like 
physical activity and physical like that that weird satisfaction of like that discomfort kind of that we gain from like exercising when we know the rewards coming it's a different yeah that's another reason also i took out the um the sorry that's another reason why i took out you know counting you know using time because that's another element of a stress factor if you really think about it oh inhale for four seconds mm -hmm. five seconds technically your subconscious is battling whether you realize it or not your subconscious is battling whether or not mm -hmm. is that a full second is that a full four seconds <laughs> Because yeah. <laughs> the subconscious awesome. mind and the conscious yeah. mind doesn't, again, it doesn't know the difference between quote unquote, well, how we perceive time. It yeah. just doesn't. You know, that, that's yeah. why certain trauma bonds or certain triggers will happen, you know, even though, oh, this was from years ago. But then when you're in front of that trigger, why is it affecting you? The subconscious doesn't care what, oh, but this happened 10 years ago. It doesn't matter. That's what you're telling your conscious mind, but the subconscious mind was like, what's time? I still have a memory within my bodily, in my, in my memory bank, in my brain, which also is tissue, right? Memory, physical. Yeah. And it's also feeling, you so know, the same resonance with that external environment and that internal environment, environment interacting with each other, giving you mm -hmm. those triggers or those feeling states. Yeah, so that's what I was gonna say. I feel like, like, cause, okay, because the body wants more of whatever. It doesn't matter if it's good or bad. Whatever you give the body, it will ask for more of that. So if you like start drinking alcohol, you'll want more. And if you start drinking juice, you'll want more. If you do yoga, you'll want more. If you start to like run, you'll want more. So like the body doesn't know what's good or bad. And I've noticed that like some addictions mm -hmm. are almost like a trauma bond. Like anything, like even a person, obviously, like any like relationship that you feel like you cannot like go a day or two without that you have like this anxiousness and you have to like wake up with coffee you have to like people get into adderall um just whatever food too like you know the it's like a something happened in your life and like you have to almost like go back and like maybe it was a comfort tool at one point of your life and it was somewhat beneficial then and it did soothe your like nervous system then but a lot of people i noticed and I, I mean, I noticed for myself too in certain, certain things that it's like a trauma bond. Like it's like a, like a, an anxiousness. And then if you just breathe and relax, <laughs> you don't really yeah, need it. Yeah, it, it's such a, such a like, contrast too when we not only let go, but just be aware of the, those bonds, right? And understand how those bonds are affecting us. It's not even, you know, because you can't even get also addicted to even working out there's um you know it could be a good and a bad right. thing at the same time or even even worst case like there's this one really bad case i'll give you an example uh this lady that only sleeps like three hours a day i think this one's on inside edition and mm -hmm. she's literally addicted to working out like it's that bad where she gets up and she works out and the way that her body it doesn't look like it's aging her great whatsoever so that's just one factor no, no. of, well, you know, I know exercise, of course, it's, it's great. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but it also causes inflammation because you're breaking right. down muscle tissue and you've got to dehydrated. So you cause, you're triggering inflammation. So there's Well, that's the thing. She's balance. not giving yeah. the body the, the healthy balance part in terms of rest, right? She's, she's all for the exercise, always going, going at it. But you can tell how her body is just, deteriorating and deteriorating and she only has three hours of sleep by the way or i like to say rest and she's not giving her yeah. body the necessary rest it needs and she's addicted to that side yeah yeah i've done consulting with somebody like that and they were like working and then training for like this marathon like they just were on the go on the go on the go and like the lady just couldn't like lose like i don't know five like it was like something ridiculous, like five, mm. 10 pounds or whatever it was that she just felt like stuck. And I'm like, you're working out too much. You're like you are like causing so much inflammation and you start to retain water. And yeah, so like, yeah, anything that's even healthy things can be in excess and it can be damaging. Too much water can dilute your like mineral yeah. levels and things like that. Yeah, so.
listening to the body super important down. yeah so uh uh what has been on your your repeat playlist when it comes to reggae i think i can i think that's one of your favorites <laughs> oh I, I just keep adding i don't i don't i'm like really bad with um artist names sometimes i'm like i try to like because i know it's like their artists and like, honor them but i'm just i kid you so not many. guys every time she's so, with me and i'm playing know, something, she has the shazam out like <laughs> yeah I've always liked, I like Wiz Kids albums well, a lot. It's still but that's considered not reggae. reggae. I'm going to play a like, video uh, um, how Shaggy uh, broke it down of how, listen, at one point it was the complete opposite, how Dancehall took some things from the African beats and now we're like switching around how Afro beats, how, you know, that's becoming more popular, actually took some aspects from Dancehall now. So, you know, we're all recycling art one way or another and it's a beautiful thing. It's not a bad thing. And um, everything has its equilibrium. There's even, there's, there was even a study, if you realize whenever we're in war, like I think during the Iraqi war or whenever, it's like really, really bad. Like, like I'm talking about real bad war. Uh, we have music that are more like upbeat, happy, etc. And then when we're out of war, which is very interesting, the mainstream music is mm -hmm. more like sad and... It, yeah, when we're out when of you're war. out of war? But that's the same as like when you have a breakup. You like who you want like up music know, right? to like shift but your mood. I, I guess with the mainstream and what they're pushing, etc., energy energetic wise, it's just very interesting to see, you know, that play out. That's just one of the main things I've noticed and I've seen studies on uh, when it comes to that. So just like how Afro Beach is becoming more popular all over again, you know, we're technically out of war, but in a way we're still you know, slowly getting into, in my opinion, maybe the Cold War, the like different aspect of the Cold War all over again. Hmm. I wonder if there's like that whole like Black Lives Matter movement or something like that. It has like something that correlates with that maybe. That's like, cause that's somewhat recent, you know, the last two years or so. I wonder if that has like a connection like why that's it's more hmm. popular again now uh, maybe there might be a definitely a connection to that yeah it could be programming someone yeah. says yeah it's it's definitely obviously yeah that's chris so he went to um to the our basil breathwork session with us and the song oh yeah hey chris he oh yeah brother us. hey yeah yeah you know chris we gotta have him over again yeah, we might do something this week, Chris. Definitely want to invite you to that. The 3 a.m. dojo, breath dojo yeah. thing. Let's do that. I want to do the the 3 a.m. breath dojo for what is it, 30 days. <laughs> oh, the, so it's not, it wasn't, breath, breath dojo is different. Breath dojo is more like a day experience where we go every three hours. But the, yeah, the 3 a.m. Oh, okay. Um, I got to pick a month, but definitely not birthday month. <laughs> Yeah, we haven't done that. We'll make it, we'll make we it out of line. did that when we first came to Miami. I like yeah. it. I'm into that. And then we'll jump. And then we'll jump into one of uh, Giselle's Kundalini activation morning session because I think she's like at five she, in the morning, or she has to be five. two also, also yeah. in the morning. F5, yeah. So we can do like 3 <laughs> MU, grab a juice, <laughs> jump into the cells activation, and we'll do my, I my juice and told, I told her class. if she wanted to do something with me, she's going to have to tell me months in advance. So she, cause she told me something like uh, last week for this week, I think. And I'm like, that's way too soon. Yeah. I, I'm at the point where you need to tell me oh, months okay. in advance. Yeah. Because I don't even know what's going to happen. I might be in Europe for maybe two, two months, but. We're aiming for just, you know, three, two, two to three weeks. I don't want to go over that, but mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to happen because apparently Germany, yes. there's a lot of, um, a lot of community in Germany. Yeah, that really? really wants me out there. So I might touch Germany on the way back. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to 
Boots. Oh, I, no. Do you have any I boots? Mean, <laughs> even when I went to Jersey, to, you know, hot and cold are the, the same thing. Um, but when it comes to a woman's menstrual cycle, you want to be more in the sauna than uh, doing cold plunge, by the way. Oh, yeah. do, you want, do you want to go over that? Do you know anything Wanna like... um, retaining to that? Oh, menstrual cycle, it's, it's a lot of it's dehydration, honestly. And um, like lack of minerals. Because um, I've noticed like the cleaner I've been cleaning up my body, the more I focus on my hydration like the minimal the minimum symptoms yeah. that i have like it's got become less and less yeah it's like it a, a period your women's like moon cycles should not be uncomfortable it should be as normal as going to the bathroom every day <laughs> if, if that's <laughs> uncomfortable too there's a big problem there that's a problem <laughs> yeah so it goes hand in hand to think that like one is different than the other it makes no sense um the same as like our sinuses like if, if you have sinus congestion everything is we're just, we're mostly fluids. We're mostly like, just, we're supposed to be about between 60, 70%. Yeah. So, so water, something when so. it comes down to cold therapy during your, your, your menstrual. So think of cold as constricting mm -hmm. and think of heat as more opening, you know? Oh, yeah. Blood vessels dilate. Um, yeah, like but you want more of an opening exactly. versus mm -hmm. constricting because you already are con constricting when it comes to the cold or just in your menstrual already so you want more of the sauna versus the cold and there's interesting studies out there when it comes to menstrual and cold plunges or cold therapy focus on whoa, what was that uh focus on the heat versus the cold when it comes to that like oh yeah someone says like release with no resistance yeah, that's why like ginger tea is really good. Um, it's aside from it being an anti-inflammatory, it also like gets the blood flowing. Um, cayenne pepper too yeah. is really good for like getting the blood flowing. Um, like normal things we eat every day that like my, my, are really my friend Tyson to get, uh, has get he everywhere he goes, no matter where he travels, he'll all, he'll also have a cayenne. <laughs> I I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> I, I, he's, I, he's like, bro, if someone's I, having a heart attack, I'll go over there with the cayenne pepper right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we, I mean, that's why I want to, I'm working on like my pursuit of health course um, and just connecting back to these like basic everyday plants that we have, you know, this is, um. there's like so much like little information. Like it's, it's like been diluted. It hasn't been passed down from generation to generation. It's actually pretty sad. Um, what's happening to my thing? And um, so yeah, I'm like, what happened to our uh, our grandmothers? And like, mothers teach passing down all this like mm. valuable information, but we're all like, wow, <laughs> jumping, <laughs> jumping to urgent, you know, centers and like, or going to the pharmacy and grabbing whatever crazy medication. I'm just like, everybody needs to relax. <laughs> Not that oh, serious. we were just talking about that yesterday as well, right? Because, you know, you're going through mm -hmm. uh, your, your own process right now. And you've noticed with your experience that everything, even though something that's called fever in the U.S. or something completely different, will be called malaria <laughs> in Africa. <laughs> yeah, they like just... I'm so like most diagnoses are like yeah they're just like localized like if you break down the word like anything with the that ends in itis is inflammation and then like the first two like root you know fit parts of the words are you know just localizing where the inflammation is usually or if there's like a hole like a you know a opening and i forgot the opening stoma or something like that um yeah they all have like if you start to break it down like it's just localizing where the inflammation is and where or like the deficiency is not the deficiency like the the lack of like function lack of productivity yeah in that like organ if you guys look up that's some really of these uh, symptoms they're they're all they're so similar and fever is a common one when it comes to someone said it like complex quote-unquote complex disease yeah So yeah, they're all pretty, like, look at all, all of them up. 
and I posted that today too that um about what was it that that these pharmaceutical companies they all say there's no cure because their pharmaceutical products won't cure you you're just going to be on manage the symptoms the roots but there is a cure Get to the roots <laughs> changing, changing your life yeah it's pretty simple but there's a lot of misinformation on what is actually healthy and what is actually food and what is actually and, like, and also most water, of these symptoms as well I mean, affects all... your breathing right that's a number one key thing i've seen with many of these symptoms so which shows you why it's so important to you know build a relationship with your breathing patterns because when you get into those states the more you're focused on your breath and harmonious patterns it will help shift you faster to heal especially when you start taking the necessary herbs or fruits or whatever the case may be uh, to help you heal a lot faster because yeah. the, the more efficiently you breathe and more efficient your blood is working and the more efficient your blood is working the more efficiently you can absorb or transmute the biophotons coming yeah. from these herbs or whatever the case may be in terms of holistic healing and not just that also your environment as well yeah no and a lot of people don't realize how much um mucus they have like congestion that that also like is a blockage and it doesn't help yeah. you breathe and we're talking about properly. excess mucus because some people uh -huh. you know today also um, yeah. give, give, give crap to Dr. Savy saying, like, not wait a minute, we need mucus too. But he was mainly talking about excess mucus, guys. C come on. You know, you know, yeah. there, there was actually yeah. a lecture where he actually did he um, um, talk about, you know, the, the reason why we do have mucus. But the main point he was making overall was the excess mucus and those obvious symptoms. Yeah. Basically, everything is some sort of congestion that, like, the body is not able to eliminate cellular waste um, properly from the body. And then it gets congested, just like, you know, you get sinus congestions, you get the lymphatic system gets congested, and that's when you get cancers, um, your digestive tract, you, know, you get constipation, which then leads to, like, diverticulitis or colitis and a bunch of other stuff. Um, yes. But, oh, yeah, I gotta hop off. <laughs> oh, I gotta, this is a happy, yeah, my <laughs> Bye. Later. Bye. There we go. Any questions, guys? All right. Someone else wanted to hop on. Dylan. Uh, yeah, I'll say this. Uh, greetings, brother. How are you? Um, electrically well. How are you? Likewise. Yeah, I, wanted to, um, I heard you mention, like, if anyone wanted to hop on to talk about the results from the sublim subliminal breathwork music. Yeah, careers. yeah please share your experiences so from it. Probably listening to them for, like, three months now. And I've been like shifting off of more like lyric old words more so or it's like just harmonious sounds and all that. So definitely helps a lot with sleep. Like I'll be playing it in my sleep. Mm. I feel an immediate pull just to my breath when listening to them. I started playing them at um, my place of employment the other day and uh, my coworkers, I just felt them immediately become like more centered. And then I had people just make remarks. I'm like, I like this. What is this? Uh, the, the mirror neuron effect. I wish I had, you know, something like subliminal uh, when I when I used to work at uh, certain places too back in the day. Uh, yeah, that's the power of mirror neurons, you know. Mm -hmm. Hey, the body doesn't lie. The breath doesn't lie. And it's just a powerful magnetic effect. And that's another characteristic of breath, right? We're literally... Just like uh, Caesar's breath, great book that, you know, shows us we're literally breathing in the same information within the natural mystic, as Bob Marley would say, air. You know, there's information in the air. There's information within water that is in the air, 
right? And just like atmospheric consciousness that I showed you guys with uh, Schiller and imaging that you can see an empty glass when you're pouring it in the air, you see how it's molecularly interacting with the atmosphere all around it, an empty glass, right? So matter, our energy is interacting in so many different layers and ripples and also our ears when we listen to music it's technically vibrational air that we're listening to to create or listen or receive and transmute the sound and feel what we feel for sure that reminds me of um i think you called it in the mental breath work the transmutational breath like when someone just rambling on rambling on just to take the and you kind of like see them switch to it i see like a big similarity between them too yeah it, it's it's uh i like to say it's also the undeniable mirror <laughs> <laughs> right we're just being more aware of the mirror that that's there awesome thank you brother. thank you brother and you're welcome on here anytime appreciate you i'm i'm coming down to uh um miami is there any place to recommend like checking out down there uh when are you coming down um 31st to the third with my other um brother that's in the birth family oh, okay uh i might host something towards the end we'll see how fast i can get certain materials and i don't want to give it away but i might host something transformal uh transformative towards the end for sure Oh, I'll check that out. I did the um, dragon breaths with you. Oh, yesterday. yeah. How, how was that? I had a drum circle, so I was only able to do like three rounds, which felt really nice. And then I went out today in the sun because in Jersey, it's been super cloudy and the sun just came back out. I did that with the uh, sun frequency breaths and it was magical. It was great. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. you. All right. Yeah, definitely. Definitely be on the lookout. Peace and harmony. Sure. You too. All right, guys. Anyone else wants to hop on and share their subliminal breathwork experience with the music? I missed the breath session on the 15th. Hey, we're working on, you know, that one we're going to make public because we're going to, we're working on mastering it. I think the audio is finished mastering i'm just working on the visuals so within the next two days be on the lookout especially i will it's such a powerful journey i'm putting that one on spotify uh and that will be the first of many so to give you a glimpse of what it's like to be in breath family or um for those that can't afford being in breath family at least you know you get to try it out and also in the Buju Bantan Sublima Breathwork music, in the description, uh, there is a glimpse of Brett Dojo 7 that we did a couple months ago with Ari, the violinist. Uh, the 40 minute guided sessions also in there. So definitely check it out. And if you want the full version, there's also options for that as well. Either get it separately or join Breath Family where all the breath dojos are in there, all the live classes are in there that we do, all the subliminal tracks uh, that I do. The one with Buju, I'm debating on putting on Spotify, but I need clearance first, but you can already download it in the Breath Family Members Group. So, you know, there are instances where I can't put it on Spotify and stuff like that. There are many tracks <laughs> <laughs> there are many tracks within Breath Library that I can't put on Spotify for obvious reasons. And there is, um, if you're Arabic, 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 or Iranian, be on the lookout for something magical. I'm just working on that as well. I want to hit as many different cultures as, as possible and integrate the breath as well and i already touched china I already touched japan where you touch india a little bit it's time to you know i'm going back to my, my roots with reggae and um next is 
you know, the Saudi Arabian Sea, if you will, I, Iran, Afghanistan, those places, Israel, you know, touching those places. And um, uh, many more. I don't want to give too much away, but that's where my mindset is, or sorry, uh, my, my goals or um, focus. I don't even like to say mindset, but the goals, the mind goals, that's where the vision is in terms of touching as many different cultures as possible and again, having fun with the breath was fire today. I'm, Ara I'm Iranian, Arabic, can't wait. Yeah, I just need some clearance and uh, someone's helping me translate and stuff, so. Oh my God. Uh, the scalar session you did for my ex-husband, he is cancer, ooh, I said the C word, but I'm taking a screenshot of that. Thank you. Uh, Nita, Nita, if you want to hop on live and share your experience, you're more than welcome to. And thank you for sharing that. Um, I do remember because we've been talking back and forth. Um, I'm happy to hear that. Wow. I'll actually just pin her in the comment. Hugh, would you get to listen to the breathwork music? Uh, any questions? Actually, let's take a glimpse of the track. But yeah, guys, any questions about breath? And I made it in a scalar environment. I feel like, um, okay, but I can't show myself as I'm ready for bed. Uh, you don't have to. You can cover the camera and just be pure audio if you're open to it. You can hop on. All right, cool. All right, I sent you a request. What's your thought on acupuncture? Depending on how you're breathing, you know, your breath is internal acupuncture. Greetings. Greetings, hello. How are you, sister? I'm doing good, thank glad, you. Glad to, um, glad to hear your voice. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. So do you Maybe. want to share your scalar experience? I know you, you typed it, but do you want to give us yes. and uh, share that? And it's your ex-husband. So that's, um, yeah, if you can give us some yes. context. Yeah, so this is, uh, okay, let me, I'm, I'm just, I was, I was gonna, I was gonna get some light here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was trying cool. to get some light. Um, yeah, so basically um, what happened was, um, on um it was in it was around um june july that i found out that uh, my ex-husband um you know um they they had told him that he had kidney it it had affected his kidney so I guess you you don't want me to mention the the word, you, right? Or, you, can, you can say you can say the just say yeah. C you know the C yeah. word with yes. kidneys. <laughs> yes. So so basically, um, okay. There's a camera the other way. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So um, he, uh, he, he I found out that he had um, the C, and it had affected his kidneys and um and they said that they they, ha they want to take it out and um that's when i got in touch with yourself and i said if um i mean i i tried to get them to get in touch with you but they were not uh they were not accepting so i was like okay my only um i mean i was with with the news it was it was just devastating for me because I felt that um, my sons are very, very young and they, they, they still need their dad. And it was very, very hard time I was going through. So I got in touch with yourself and, um, and you said, I have to send a picture of, of, um, 
of my ex-husband and you can do you can do the scalar and uh, you'll use his picture and we went ahead and and, and done that and um, so I guess what happened is um, they what they had told me was that they they were they they were going to go with the operation they had to take the kidney out um, but they said when they were t they, when they took it out it had already spread and it had spread um, to the pancreas. And, and um, whoever I would talk to or wh when I would search about it, it was like they would say, there's no, there's no way, like, once it's spread, that's it. So it was, um, it was very, very, very upsetting for me. Um, but then... Uh, um, after the operation, they said, and they had done the checkup, everything on him again, the checks, everything. The doctors have said, um, he's clear. There's nothing, um, and he's he, he's doing well, and he doesn't have any more pain. And so, yeah, it was, uh, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, did you did he know that he was being on the scaler at all? Did you tell him or no? Yes, I mean I told I told my sons about it, and um, at one point when I was telling my sons, I he he was he was there and he 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 would he would listen <laughs> he was listening, <laughs> so um, I because I could hear him there, and um, he did know he, he did know that I did that, and I um, and I had told my sons when um i mean i told them to 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 go ahead for them to get in touch with you so he knew about that and then afterwards when i um was doing that i told them that i've done this so they knew about it yes wow wow do, do they have a understanding of it or it's mainly you that has to somewhat it's, uh, yeah yeah, it's it's mainly me. Um, they are they are just recently getting to understand about meditation and breath works, and you know, like um, my son. Um, the thing is that what was very very hard for me was because um, my middle son in April. Um, he lost his very, very best friend um, to suicide. So um, he was not doing well either. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is on top of this is their father is, is, is um, this has happened to their father. Um, and for Christmas, they came over here to London and I did a few meditations with him and he said, mom, this uh, really, really relaxes me. It's really helped me. Um, so they're, they're just getting familiar with it right now. They're getting familiar, familiar with how um, the breathing, um, because for the meditation, I made sure that he started with a lot of breath work. And he, uh, every morning when he was awake and I was awake around like 6, 7 in the morning, I would go up to him and we'll... We, we we went through this um, breath work and um, meditation and and he really uh, he really liked it. He said um, it is really helping him. Uh, it's a it's a it's truly a blessing that you know you can show them another option that they have. You know, especially going through what he's going yeah. through. And, you know, showing them another avenue, another another way to also experience life, and they don't have to um, be swallowed up and let the despair, you know, conquer yes. their overall mental being. Yes, ex exactly, exactly. That's that's something that um, I'm really trying to uh, get them to understand. So so it's like they've had. Uh, they've had a slight, um, how shall I say, um, a slight experience of it, and they've, they've, they've realized it's really, it does, it does help them. 
um, and I and I tell them and I say to them, I've had I've had friends who have asked me to, um, you know, talk to the, to their son about this, and 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 that person has cured. Like he 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 had gone to so many doctors and um, so many specialists, and um, like when when he came to me. He said, I'll do anything. Just tell me what I, I should do. And within a few months, this was from October to April, um, he was cured. Wow. Um, he, he, yeah, he, he, he couldn't, he couldn't fly out. He couldn't, he couldn't leave his house. That's how, um, uh, you know, his condition was. And in April, um, I saw he he had flown to Dubai and and I, I saw the story and I was like I was just I was amazed myself I couldn't believe it <laughs> I couldn't believe it and um, yeah it's um, it, it was amazing it was an amazing experience for him and for myself because um, now I could say to everyone this stuff really works yeah wow. Well, thank you for sharing that experience, sister. And, and um, you know, next time when you're suited, if you ever feel called to, you're more than welcome to hop on. And I'm sure this will definitely help others who may have similar um, experiences to also show them there's another option when, you know, you've, you've tried or you've sought out everything you can do. And this is a possible help for sure. It, yes, definitely, definitely. Because, um, um, you know, I was, I was telling, I was, uh, it was just out of the blue. I, I had just met the, um, the mom and she, I was talk, talking to her about um, the future of medicine, the future of healing is going to be through frequencies and um, it's not this, uh, you know, these medications are, you know, and um, that's where the conversation started. And because they had tried all these avenues with different doctors and specialists and nothing had worked for them, mm. um, it was like this was their their last option. Um, and, uh, um, and yeah, so, so, so it was like um, the, the son was like, just tell me anything and I'll do that, you know? And um, he was very, very determined. Uh, and, uh, and, I, and I, you know, and I wrote it down. I wrote it down. I said, um, I, am, I am going to see you in London. And, uh, and I would write, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And when I found out that he was traveling, I um I actually took a picture of of what I had written. I mean, I I had totally forgotten I had written this in my gratitude book. And when I came back to my book, I um I uh, took a picture of it and I sent it to her. I said I had forgotten that I had I had written this down for you. But it was all to do I mean the the breath work is uh, unbelievable. Well, sister, yeah. thank you for sharing the breath and thank you for um, being a pillar in your family and taking that leap of faith. I know it, it's, it's, it's something out of the norm to do something like Scalar, but you did it and you know, you, you've seen firsthand what it can do. So honored to be part of that journey and thank you for mm -hmm. trusting in what I do and and also being Thank part you. of the push for these type of modalities. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for, um, I mean, I, uh, I mean, um, I've always, every time you've had lives, I've learned so much from it. So I <laughs> always, <laughs> as soon as I see like, Oh, you're, or you're, you have a live. I try to, to hop on there because, um, I find every time I I I I get new information, I I get 
new knowledge. So it's it's always it's always um, uh, it's always great. So that's why it was like um, when I found out you have this scaler, and I heard, and I heard other people's testimonies. So that's why I was like, okay, I gotta do this. I gotta do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a way to pay it forward. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Have a breathful night, sister. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. I think I saw some questions. I think that's it for the night. Thank you all for tapping in. Uh, anything else? Anything else? Do you believe in taking? Oh, that's all good. All right, guys. Uh, oh, we got a question here. Oh, all right. All right, guys. Uh, thank you for tapping in. Thank you all for sharing the breath. If you found value in this, share it on your stories, share it around however you feel called to, and definitely tap in with the reggae subliminals. We got two, and this is uh, uh, some, how do I put this? This is a taste, a little taste of what the album from the reggae album that I'm working on, you know, what that's going to bring. And thank you also for sharing everything when it comes to Scalar as well. You know, not only can we help send frequencies remotely to a person, but also a place, also to, you know, what's going on in California with the storm. So thank you all for the real ones out there sharing my stuff and, and sharing this. I always wear the hat. No, I don't always wear the hat. I've been, um, I've been actually utilizing it for plants. So sometimes I'll, I'll leave it here on plants because I've been putting more plants in the house. So thank you all for sharing the breath. Have a breathful day. Peace and harmony. <laughs>